Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I really, really hope that you're doing well. Today's video is super, super, super exciting because I am finally announcing what it is that I'm doing this year. Um, so I'm gonna quickly announce that and then we're gonna go into a bit of an in-depth video about the actual topic. So what it is that I'm doing this year is obviously not going back to medical school. It's in the title. And if I was going back to medical school, I would've started a week and a half ago. And clearly I'm not in medical school right now. I'm in Singapore with my parents. So completely two different ambiances. So what I'm actually doing this year academically is I'm intercalating. So I'm taking a year out of study between my third and my fourth year of medical school to do a master's in tissue engineering for regenerative medicine. So that's super, super excited. And I honestly cannot wait to start in just over a week now. But obviously this video is not gonna be a one minute long video. <laughs> we're gonna actually go more in depth about the topic of intercalation. So we're gonna talk about what is intercalation, the pros and cons of intercalating, why I personally chose to intercalate, as well as the resource that has helped me during my intercalation journey. And anything that is relevant, I will leave down below in the links so you can do you continue doing your own research because you're gonna start to figure out that intercalation is a very independent, and personalized pathway so there's not a one-size-fits-all answer basically. So let's first talk about what is intercalation. So intercalation at its most basic basic form is you taking a year out of medical school to do a different degree in one year. So that's the simplest definition and the, that degree can be a bachelor's, it can be a master's and it can be in so many different disciplines. So you can do business, you can do mathematics, you can do statistics, you can do more in-depth medical things like hematology. So honestly you can do a load of everything, leadership, global health, public health, a lot of different things um, with intercalation. But at its more complex nature, intercalation is actually doesn't work the same way in all different medical schools. And I think that's super important to mention right now. Some medical schools don't allow you to intercalate at all. So you have to do five years of medical school in one go and that's it, yes, that. Other medical schools will force you to intercalate. So for example, Oxbridge, uh, Imperial, these are the ones that I know of. It's medical school is six years and you do two years of medical of pre-medical school studies, then one year of a bachelor's degree and then three years of clinical medicine. So oftentimes that forced year of intercalation has to be a bachelor's because you can only do a master's after three years of study undergrad. So you, if you're doing it after two years, you have to do a bachelor. So these schools basically are, you can only do a bachelor's degree and you have to do it. And then there's other schools like mine, which allows you to do an intercalation or not to do an intercalation. But then again, it's quite complex because different schools will have different rules as to what you can do and when you can do it. So for example, King's College, um, I've heard you can only intercalate after the third year if you want to do a master's, I think. Don't quote me on that. As far as I know, that's that. And other medical schools like mine, you can intercalate after second year, so that's only a bachelor's degree, or after third year, or after fourth year. And at that point in time, you're either doing a bachelor's or a master's degree. So intercalation basically is quite complex. It's very medical school dependent. So if you're currently an aspiring medical student and you want to understand a bit more as to what intercalation actually is and all of these things, I would really recommend you looking into that as a very important criteria for selecting your medical schools. So that's what is intercalation. Also, maybe I'm gonna add a little bit of a, I'm gonna add a bit of a bonus here as to the difference between a bachelor's degree and a master's degree and how you can basically make a decision between both of them. We're gonna briefly look at that. And if you want me to go into more detail in another video, I might do that. So a bachelor's degree is obviously an undergrad degree. So it runs in a very similar way as to the preclinical years of medical school as in the, the timeline of the studies. So you have a similar amount of holidays and it goes basically from September to May. So that's like the undergrad timeline. Masters are a lot longer. They often go from September to September. So it's a whole full year and you get like limited holidays during uh, summer. So that's something to think about. Obviously, it also means that you have less time after a master's degree to then jump back into medicine. Also what you do in undergrad is oftentimes a lot more broad. There's a lot of more like different modules that you can take. So you're looking at a subject from a lot more of a broad angle. And sometimes you get to student like select certain components, like certain optional modules to hone in your interest, but it's still at a base, it's still at a more broad level. Whereas a lot of the times master's degrees 
are a lot more specialized. You look into a very specific niche topic. For example, I'm doing tissue engineering, which is quite niche. And then within that, I'm going to be looking at tissue engineering on a very specific thing when I'm going to be doing my, my research project. The other thing that also is different is the funding opportunity. So we'll talk about that in the pros and cons. But basically, the funding for undergrad works from what I understand, because it's quite complex and I'm an EU student, so I'm not entitled to any really of the uh, Student Finance UK. But from what I understand, if you're doing a bachelor's degree, you're still entitled to basically the same thing that you're being entitled, that you're entitled to right now in medical school. If you're doing an intercalation in a bachelor's degree, either after your second year or after your third year, your student finance doesn't change. Um, and so you're entitled to the exact same thing. And then later on, you'll be entitled to the what is it called? The NHS bursary. I'm gonna leave relevant links below so that you can read these things for yourself. Whereas for a master's degree, master's degree, you're not entitled to the undergrad student finance that you were entitled to in medical school. So if you're doing a master's degree between third and fourth year, you're, basically your fees are not covered by student finance. They're covered by something else from what I understand that's called the SFE postgraduate master's loan, which does not cover the whole tuition fee for the masters and doesn't give you any maintenance. So obviously that's a lot of financial pressure to cover on your own. You also have oftentimes a bit more time in masters so you can do, you can work, but it is something that you have to take into consideration immediately to see is a masters possible for me financially? And if it isn't, trying to see, can you work? If you can't work and can't earn as much as you would need to live during that year, then see what sort of like funding opportunities exist. And I'll leave down below like resources that can help you with finding funding opportunities and scholarships and things like that. I'm gonna leave that down below if that's something that would be relevant to you. So these I think are the main things to look at between a master's and a bachelor's. Obviously a master's is a higher level of education than a master's, so if you were doing a master's, you'd be graduating medical school with a master's and a bachelor's, whereas if you were doing a bachelor's degree as an intercalation, you'd be graduating with two bachelors. Now that we're done with kind of this bonus section, let's move on to talking about the pros and cons of intercalating. Let's talk with, start with the pros because I think it's always nice to start with the positive. First pro, that's the most obvious one, is you're gonna get to learn new skills. Uh, skills that they don't teach you in medical schools, uh, whatever you decide to do you're going to learn new skills. Basically you're going to learn new things and be able to broaden what it is that you can do and by doing that you're going to strengthen your CV. Also you're going to be maybe able to find out other different career paths that interest you and start honing in a little bit more as to what you want your career pathway to look like. That could be possible with doing intercalation. The other thing is that it gives you a breather, it gives you a year off of medicine, a year where you can just breathe a little bit more, get off of the medical school like train, stop running after everything and take a little bit of time off to look at your medical school like career from far, understand what you like about medicine, what you don't like about medicine and honestly just give you a break, a little bit of time to breathe and to figure out a little bit more what is it that you want to do within medicine, what is it that you like that you don't like. So I honestly think that a time off this career that honestly if you don't intentionally take time off you're going to be doing this till you retire is quite a good pro. The other thing is obviously you're going to get to meet new people, you're going to get to network and also if you're doing a research based degree you're probably going to get able to publish, go to conferences and build your CV and build your portfolio for foundation years that way as well without being in medical school at the same time. So that's also really good. Moving on to the negatives, the cons. So the first thing is that obviously it's adding an extra year to your degree. So instead of graduating in five years or graduating in six years, so you're gonna take an extra year before you're getting paid, an extra year before you're being a doctor. And if you're really one of those people that wanna get in and out of medical school, get paid as quick as possible and get to being a consultant ASAP, probably not the best thing for you to be doing an intercalated degree. The other thing that I've slightly touched on is the funding. Obviously it touches a bit more people that want to do masters, but an extra year is an extra year that needs to be funded. If the means are there, then great. That's really good and you know, feel grateful and blessed because it's, it's amazing. But if they're not there trying to start to figure out now, is this something that's viable for you to take a year out and add an extra year of study an extra year financial pressure and things like that. So as I said, I'm gonna leave all of the links for 
funding and things like that down below just so that you can get to read and understand these as well because I'm not the best person to ask as I said I'm an EU student I'm not entitled to really any of the student finance in England. The other thing that I think is important to mention is going back to medical school after your intercalated degree is a thing and especially if you're taking time out after third year you're basically have to be back on your feet and you know understanding medicine again and remembering all of your OSCE things really fast so reintegrating medicine could be a bit of a challenge initially so it's something to think about that you will forget a little bit of about medicine during this year and so coming back will might be a little bit of a of a challenge and a bit more of a steep learning curve so just be aware of that. And the other thing is that please don't go into intercalation for the points uh, because anyways they've taken them out now for foundation years so you don't get any extra points for doing any extra degrees. Do it for the skills, do it for your own personal career, do it for your own personal reasons that have nothing to do with the points because obviously if you get to publish that's points that you get on their application and just do it because you want to do it not because there's external things that are telling you you should do an intercalation you should do this you should do that because then you're going to get extra points and you're going to get to go wherever you are first of all that's never guaranteed and also doing things just for the points or doing things just for external factors is not great <laughs> frankly and it's you know things need to come from within don't take external things to fuel you, find your own fuel within yourself, okay? So don't do it for the points, and anyways, the points don't matter now. So now, let's talk about why I decided to intercalate. My journey to intercalation was very, very up and down. It was very much like, yes, I want to, no, I don't want to, I wanna do this, I wanna do that. But basically, it came down to a few things. The reason why I wanted to take a year out and intercalate were, first thing, I got to the end, I, I realized that I was gonna end up after third year with medical school fatigue. I just needed time out, I needed time to look at my life from a bit of afar, get off of the like medical school train and just reflect a little bit more as to my career choices and what it is that I wanted to do. The other thing that pushed me to wanting to do an intercalation and especially a master's is that I'm interested in research. I always thought that I liked it, but I felt that in medical school I didn't get a lot of opportunity to do that and really understand if it was something that I enjoyed. So I wanted to do a master's in research to allow me to really understand if research is something that I really enjoy or not and just take the plunge that way. Obviously it was a bit of a risky thing to do because I was a little bit like, I'm pretty sure I'm going to enjoy it, but I'm not too sure because I hadn't had like specific proof yet uh, that it was something that I liked because I hadn't done any project that I really enjoyed until then but I liked the research process and in the end of third year I did a project that I actually really enjoyed and I actually got a quite a good mark on it which I was really proud of but I enjoyed that project and I was like okay like this year is going to be fun and the other thing as well is that I wanted to meet new people I started medical school in covid and so it was quite difficult to meet my crew meet my gang so I obviously have my medical school friends but I just have this deep desire and this this deep need to meet other people, broaden my horizons, and I feel that intercalation is a great way to do that. So that was why I wanted to intercalate. Also, I need to mention that I'm very blessed and I'm very grateful that I don't have to worry about funding this master's degree, which honestly is a massive, massive blessing, and I know that. And this is why I, you know, work hard every day because I really want to give back to the people that have given so generously to me um, for my whole life. So that's obviously something that needs to be said, um, talking about my own experience. And then the other reason why I chose to do this specific degree, first of all, I said I wanted to do a master's and then I didn't want to move, so I wanted to stay in my university. And I, at the end, it kind of got to the point where I was either doing something in pregnancy and fertility or doing the tissue engineering one. And I'm somebody that's a bit more interested in doing surgery in the future. And I've heard a lot about good, a lot of good things of the tissue engineering masters for aspiring surgeons. Also, I felt that the this master's was not too specific on one aspect of medicine yet. It would allow me to decide whenever the masters came around what I wanted to specialize in on my project and learn a lot of techniques that can be applied to a lot of medicine and not just like focus on one like basically specialty of medicine yet. So that's basically what made me decide to do this masters and Frankly, I'm so glad that I decided to do this, to intercalate and to do it in this specific field because life has not been 
the nicest to me, especially at the end of the third year. So having the time to just take some time off a little bit, not have to go back to hospital and run around like a headless chicken to find consultants, I get to be a normal student and learn something new and meet new people and that's exactly what I need right now. So I'm feeling super, super blessed, super grateful, as I said, um, and super excited to start this new journey. So now let's get on to the last section of this video, which were the resources. The main resource that like I've used quite a lot during my intercalation journey was the intercalate.co.uk website, which basically shows you all of the different degrees within the UK that exist within the different medical schools inter intercalation wise. So that helps you to make your decision as to what you want to do. And that was quite nice to have a place where there was all of it, um, at least all of it to my knowledge. The other thing that I want to touch on is the intercalation process is very, very individualized. Different medical schools do it differently. So for us, if you stayed within the same medical school, within the same university, sorry, you just had to send a CV and a personal statement internally, and that would go directly to the application office. But if you wanted to apply externally, then that's different. You have to go to the university that you're applying to and follow their own guidelines and their own things. So it's basically a very individualized process. That's what I'm trying to say. It's not one size fits all like the UCAS system. So if that's something that you want to do as an intercalation, go online, see what people have done before, ask your peers, ask people that are above you um, medical school wise, what have they done, if they've intercalated or not, if they know people that have, get their contacts, get in contact with them, ask your medical school like year leads and things like that for information about it. So just like stay curious and keep your eyes open to opportunities because you never know where they're gonna fall out of. And yeah, I hope that I've touched on most things that I wanted to talk about about intercalation, but if I haven't and there's other things you wanna add, please leave them down in the comments. That would be really useful for other people. And if there's other things that you think you would want me to talk about in more detail about intercalation, please do let me know. I'll probably do an extra video if there's anything else, or if you guys have a lot of questions, I'll just do like a Q&A uh, about it. And yeah, I hope this video was useful to you. I'm super excited for this year, I'm not gonna lie. And I'm super excited to bring you guys along, vlogging some of it, which is gonna be exciting. And yeah, if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel, like this video, share this video with other people that could benefit from it as well. And without further ado, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go edit this video and I'll see you guys really, really soon. Bye guys. Mm -hmm.